All right, coding cowgirls and cowboys, I hope you're ready to giddy up because we're about to learn about source control in Xcode with GitHub. A source control is going to allow us to save copies of different versions of the software development project that we're working on. And we want to do that for several reasons. You'll want to save versions over time. You might decide that you want to revert to an earlier version, say if you made some changes and it screwed something up, or you find out that you've got bugs in your code. You'll use source control to be able to share code with others, and it's a really valuable tool when you're working on a software development project as a member of a team. And you might have noticed in the previous video that we didn't save anything, and that's because Xcode saves our updates automatically. There is a save command under the file menu, but you really don't need to use that. Now, source control is a different animal, and you'll hear me use the term source control and version control interchangeably. What we're talking about with version control is we're creating a holding place for all of the significant copies of our program that we want to save. Now, a few key terms. Git is an open source version control software program that's built into many computer and operating systems. It's built into your Mac. And when we use Git on Xcode, it will save versions to our Mac locally. GitHub is a web-based service that will allow us to take those things that we are saving and push them up into the cloud so that we've got our backup available in the cloud and it allows others to access our projects if we want to share them. Now, each of the saved copies to a version control system is referred to as a commit. As you go through our tutorial, you'll probably want to commit at least after you complete every single section in a project. And if you think of a commit as a saved version of a project, the holding place for all of the commits in a project is a repo or a repository. So in this video, we'll learn how to use Git and GitHub with our UR Awesome project. We're going to create a repo for UR Awesome on GitHub. We're going to create several commits. We're going to push those to the repository. And we'll also show you how we can roll back and work with the previous commit as well. So let's get at it. So why don't you open up your UR Awesome project in Xcode. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a GitHub repository so that we can save all of our commits or push all of our commits to GitHub. Now, just a reminder, when we first created this project, we clicked an option that said create Git repository. That created a repository on the Mac that's going to save these different versions or these different commits, but those commits are going to be saved locally. What we're going to do with GitHub is we'll create a repository where we can take the commits and push them online. Git is local. GitHub is in the cloud. Now, it's possible to work with Git and GitHub outside of Xcode, but there's a terminal interface. It's really ugly. You can also work with GitHub over the web, but it's integrated into Xcode, so let's go ahead and use that. Now, here we are. Our project navigator is showing. We're going to click on the second option here. If you hover your cursor over, you can see it says Source Control Navigator. Now, there is a triangle to expose different options here as well. Uh, I've clicked it once, and we see that it says You Are Awesome Master. I've clicked a second time, and it says Branches. Now, it's possible to take a project and then create a branch so that you've got another version of this that's not going to modify the original. We won't worry about that right now. Now, we only have one branch here. I'm going to click on Master, and we see Initial Commit. Now, Initial Commit was set up when we first saved our project when we click that option that said create a local git repository there's actually nothing in it it's an empty project now we're looking at our initial commit here i'm going to click back on the project navigator the little file folder and notice in here we have a little m next to the main storyboard that m means that we've modified this file and only this file since our initial commit so all of our changes were actually on the storyboard. We didn't touch any of these other files. But the M reminds us, hey, you've made some changes and you haven't committed them yet. So you can consider the M to be an unsaved changes or an uncommitted changes reminder. So why don't we go ahead and commit them? Creating a commit is really easy. We actually have a source control menu up here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select commit. This presents a dialog where we can make the commit. We see one file with a check next to it that has an M indicating that that's the one that was modified. And Git will always want you to put a commit message in here. So what we'll do is we'll say um, complete. 2.1 because we just completed chapter 2.1 and we'll say commit one file when we click on this this saves it and now we've got our first commit here locally after the initial commit that's got any of the changes that we made and notice that the m went away for main storyboard and this new commit also includes the comment message completed 2.1 so we've saved it, but that commit is local. So committing and having copies local is great, but what we want to do is take advantage of GitHub as well. Having stuff in the cloud is even better. So I'm going to click back on our source control navigator over here. Uh, I'm going to click on our UR Awesome project, right click on it. I have a bunch of different options in here, and one of them is create UR Awesome remote. So this comes up here, and remember, you put your GitHub password and your user ID in here, so it should know where to save that information. We did that in an earlier video. So here's our repository name. Let's give the repository a description. This is a project for chapter two in gallagher.com slash Swift. And this is a public repo. Uh, the name by default is origin. We'll keep it at that, and we'll click on create. So now what we've just done is we have created a space on GitHub 
called a repo or a repository where we can push these commitments or save these commitments. So now I'm going to go back up here to source control again, and I'm going to say push. And what push is going to do is first it says, hey, where do you want to save this? I want to save it to the origin master branch. We only have one here. And I'm going to say push. I'll get a little activity indicator. It says pushing you are awesome. And now let's verify that this actually happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into my browser. I'm going to visit my GitHub account, which is just github.com slash Gallagher. So you should be visiting yours. And if you click on repositories up here, we should see that one at the top, and you may only have one if this is the first time you've used GitHub, is you are awesome. By the way, by default, we have dashes that are inserted for any non-text or numeric character. So that's why we've got dashes where the spaces and the exclamation point are. That's not going to hurt our project at all. And I'm going to click on this. See, our description is right here. Down here is where we see our files. If you're curious, you can go into the folders here. You're going to see the same exact stuff that you have in your project folder on your Mac. So you just created a Git repo for your project, and you pushed it up. Good work. So now return to Xcode, and let's make some changes. So I'm back in my project navigator. I'm going to click on main storyboard here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the you are awesome message here. What I'll do is I'll click and I'll drag. And instead of being in the top, I'll put it right here in the middle. Um, I'll also change the message from being you are awesome to giddy up exclamation point. Um, I'll change, whoops, it moved a little bit there. I'll just bring it down to the middle. Um, let's see, why don't I go ahead and change the font? I'll make that nice and big. And oh, why don't I change the color so that it's also green? So let's see, how about the system green color I'll use right here? So good, I've made a bunch of changes. Now the M isn't showing up here. Sometimes it takes a little while for Xcode to catch up with any of the changes that we've made. Um, but it will show up eventually. Also, there's a shortcut that you can do. Um, there's uh, something that forces a build. If you hold down Shift, Command, and K, and this command is sort of like forcing Xcode to update all of its thought about a project. And you can see that the M shows up here. So this is now signifying, hey, I've got some uncommitted changes that exist here. I can go ahead and commit those now. By the way, I'm, it's unusual. I'm noticing that I'm getting an internal error up here. Hopefully you're not having that as well. My Xcode didn't crash. I don't know why I've got that, but I'm just going to go ahead and ignore it. And what I am going to do is I'm going to go up under source control and I'm going to select commit. First, before we can commit, we've got to go ahead and we've got to put in a commit message in here. So I'll say changed to giddy up. Um, I'm going to say push to remote. So this is an option where not only am I committing, but I'm also pushing this commitment up to GitHub. Um, I keep this as the original master that I've got. I'm going to click on commit one file and push here. And notice the M goes away. And let's see if we've got this in GitHub. So here I am over in GitHub. And notice it says two commits. Well, when I click on this, I actually see the initial commit completed 2.1. And then here's my comment for changed to giddy up. Great. Now, how do you get your stuff back from GitHub? Well, let me show you how to do that. Let's imagine in this scenario that we've crashed our computer and we need to go and get our project on another computer. Well, we can do that pretty easily. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out of Xcode. So there we are, no more Xcode. And now I'm going to minimize my browser and I'm going to throw away you are awesome. So imagine that the computer has crashed and now we need to recover what we had before. So I'll go back into our browser. We're inside of you are awesome. I'm going to go back and just click on the title of this repository. So, you know, you can imagine if you went into your GitHub account and you went into your repo and you got to your repository, you could just type in the straight URL to get you there. Here is you are awesome. So when I click on you are awesome, you should see something which looks like this. And over here on the right, there is a green button that says clone or download. So I'm going to click on this button. I'm going to click on open in Xcode. I get a message here that says, do you want to allow this page to open in Xcode? I certainly do. So I'm going to say allow. It may take a second, but it's downloading all the files in the repo. We can see Xcode is launching. It's verifying you are awesome. It's going to ask me where I want to save this. Notice it's going to save the outside folder with this u-r-awesome name. That's just the name of the outer project folder, and you could change that if you wanted to. I'm going to save this right to the desktop. Look, I've got nothing on the desktop. I'm going to say clone. So it's making a copy here. And it opens up in lovely Xcode. Let's go ahead and verify this. So if I click on my main storyboard, sure enough, this is what I saved with my giddy up in here. Looking good. And in fact, if I quit out of Xcode, minimize my browser, I can see here is my file folder here. It's named u-r-awesome, the name that I got from GitHub. But everything inside contains the original names that we had for our project. So this is fine. And if you want to, actually, as long as you've quit out of Xcode, you can rename this outer project file. So it was called you 
are awesome with spaces and an exclamation point at the end. There we go. So I'm going to double click back on the project. I'm going to launch it in Xcode. Everything's looking good. So you see the advantage of being able to commit and push those commits up to GitHub. You got backups and you can also share commits with others, maybe your professor, people that you're working on a project for, people that you're working on a project with, and you've even got a portfolio of your work up on GitHub. Good work. Now I want to show you a couple more scenarios. When we downloaded a new version of the project, we actually got that from GitHub using the browser, but we can get it from Xcode too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out of Xcode. I'm going to delete you are awesome again in the trash. It's gone away and I'm going to launch Xcode. And I don't know if you noticed this before, but when you launch Xcode, you get a bunch of different options. We'll eventually work with playgrounds. We've worked on creating a new project, but we can also say clone an existing project. Now you might not consider this to be super useful. Uh, if we click on it, you'll see that there's essentially a search box that we can use that can search all of GitHub. So if you type in you are awesome, like this, well, there are a bunch of students that have worked on this project before, so you can see a whole bunch of different UR awesome projects on GitHub. But if you remember the URL, you could type in HTTP colon slash slash github.com slash Gallagher slash U dash R dash awesome dash. Now I find this less useful. It's prone to typos, but if you do paste in the entire URL, or if you type it in, you can see that it's just going to go ahead. It's going to clone it. It's going to ask you where you want to save this. I'll save it to the desktop. I'll get rid of these dashes in here and just save it as you are awesome. We had the exclamation point after our original version, click on clone. Notice that it's going ahead and save those files. And here we have the copy back down on our desktop. Great. Now there are a bunch of other things that we could do too. Let's imagine we take a look at what we've done and we say, hey, this giddy up, that's just terrible. I want to go back to what I had previously. Well, one thing that we could do is return to GitHub and you see where it says three commits. Well, if we click on commits, this is why your comments for commits are very important. We can click the commitment with the name completed 2.1 and we can see a list of all the changes that are part of this commit. But you can also click this browse files button. Notice that this says that we are inside of our completed 2.1 commitment. And what you do if you click clone or download, you'll get that version of the commit in Xcode. So we're not going to do this now, but if we did, what we'd be doing is we would be grabbing a version from an earlier commit, so an earlier copy of our project, and saving it locally. So that's one way you can get back to an earlier version. If you wanted to take a look at each of the different changes and either accept or reject them, we could also use Xcode for this. Now back in Xcode, let's take a look at these icons in the upper right hand corner. And one of these has arrows in both directions. If you hover your cursor over, it says show or hide the code review. Well, I'm going to click on this and what it shows side by side is the local version. Plus this also shows a commitment that I had made previously to the master branch. Now I wish Xcode would identify the commitment by the comment message that we put in. Instead, it uses a unique number that GitHub comes up with, but it's not too difficult to verify which version we're looking at. Let's click back over here in our source control navigator. Now, if we want to restore to completed 2.1, that's the earlier version that this ends in EF41. Okay, I'm going to click on my project, my main storyboard, then do my side by side comparison here. And let's see if I want to take a look at EF41, that previous version. Now watch what happens if I scroll down. I can actually see the differences. Now, here's an unfortunate thing. We had made changes to main storyboard and this doesn't look very familiar to you. That's because the stuff on the storyboard is saved in XML format. It's kind of like HTML. It's the language that's used to express what we see on the storyboard. But we can go through here and we can see, oh yeah, it says giddy up on the left and it says you are awesome on the right. Well, if I click on this little downward pointing arrow with one change in here, I can say discard change. And what I've done here, if I click on discard, is I get rid of the giddy up and I go back to you are awesome. Down here, similarly, I can revert my changes to the font. So we can see over here what my previous system color was. Unfortunately, it's all in XML, so it's not really friendly, but I can say discard change here. And if I want to get out of the code review, I can just click on it one more time and the XML is rendered. We can see I'm back in you are awesome. Now notice it has an M for modified in here, but if I want to go back and commit these changes and push that commitment to GitHub, I can do that really easily. Just go up to the source control menu and select commit. I can type a comment in here that says restored you are awesome in maroon. Click on push to remote. Commit one file. If we look on GitHub and the web in our You Are Awesome repo, we should see if we look at our commits, we've got a fourth commit in here and the top one has the name Restored You Are Awesome in Maroon. So hopefully this was really useful. Now you know how to commit, make essentially saves or backup copies of your project and how to push those so that you've got those backup copies shared on GitHub. Keep at it, coder.